Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Miles High Club podcast. I'm your host, Miles. This is episode number 43. Uh, today is one of those days. You know when you just, bleh, nothing's wrong. Don't worry, nothing's wrong. But you know when you just, bleh. That's the only way I can explain what's happening to me right now. I th- I'm blaming the weather. Last week, I was here, last time I recorded, it, was, it felt like it was in the middle of a heat wave. Highest temperatures all year. Some of the hottest temperatures that we've had in how many years and then this week started and it's just been rain thunderstorm lightning the heavens have opened london i I, do i feel sorry for londoners i mean some of them londoners have been hit with torrential rain that's caused heavy flooding across parts i've seen videos of cars getting stuck okay the people i do feel sorry for uh i think so i don't know what names i don't know which ones but some london hospitals were actually affected by flooding. So they were telling people, yo, if go to a different local place, were, were flooded, tube stations were flooded, hospitals got flooded. It was, it seemed like London or some parts of London were really going through it. Meanwhile, or while all this was happening, it was dry in Birmingham. Maybe a little bit of spitting, but it was dry. And then the start of this week and today especially, I had to delay my recording only because all you could hear was thunder. Like I started to recording, heard the thunder, thought, let me listen back to this. And I was like, ah, it's a bit too distracting. But if it happens again, um, we're just going to keep going. But it's finally stopped. There was flooding by me about 10 minutes away in somewhere called Cradley outside the Tesco. It looked like there was a car stuck in the middle. Now, every time there is a flood or an area of flood, there is always a video or a picture going around of someone's car stuck in the middle, just abandoned in the middle of a flood or possibly being carried down in the flood. And all I can ever think is, why do people attempt it? If, listen, if you've got a Land Rover or one of those big off-roading cars and you think to yourself, ah, it's what my car's designed for, I'm a go for it. I'm not going to judge you too much because again, like you said, ah, you you kind of got a car built for these kind of off-road I mean, you're technically on road and it's flooding, but you're still built for off-road terrain. So you'd expect your car to handle a little flood. But all you people out here driving KAs and Fiat 500s, any car that is not built for off-road, basically, you just your normal residential car. Why do you think you can? Why do you think you can beat the puddle? I've, and that's what it is as well. I think people tell themselves, "Ah, oh, it's only a puddle," and they forget that a puddle is they're. Puddle sounds small. Like if someone says, oh, it's a little puddle. To me, I'm imagining a little circle, size of a hula hoop, you know, something for kids to jump in. Anything big, that is a body of water, okay? That is a, a body of water. That There is an underwater section to that. See, a puddle, there's no such thing. And to me, you can't go underwater in a puddle. That should be, that's the definition. Like as soon as you can go underwater, that is not a puddle. That is a body of water. This shit, you can swim. Like you could go to the bottom of these things and whether it's a metre or 10 metres, you can swim. That is not for you to be risking your car. And what do you tell the insurer? Oh, the insur- what do you tell your insurance? Oh, yeah. It flooded. Oh, what, the flood just happened to catch you in the middle of the road? What can I say? No, it's some people, like I said, some people I feel bad for. Like these people that are working in hospitals, people in hospitals, someone that needs to go to or get to a hospital for whatever reason. And you can't get there because, like I said, tubes are flooded or your hospital's flooded and they're telling you to go somewhere else. It's people, but yeah, people that have had to like abandon cars because you you thought your car was built for action that it clearly wasn't. And then you've dr- driven into a, pu- a body of water and they just stuck. You and your car just stuck there. I've seen videos of people having to get out of their car and, you know, doggy paddle, wade their way through the water just to get out. And it's never that worth it. Just turn around. It's never like... A, Unless it's an emergency, and even if it's an emergency, I'm finding another route. If it's not an emergency, taking a picture, sending it to whoever I need to send it to to explain why I'm either not coming or I'm going to be late, and then I'm just going to either wait it out or drive around. Just find find an alternative route. Get your maps open. We don't deal with A to Zs anymore. So open your maps, zoom out a little bit, and then you just find an alternative route that helps you get to where you need to get to. And you don't have to worry about an insurance job on your water flooded car, but. Move, moving off my little my little weather rant, the Olympics has officially started, and I'm pissed. 
past few weeks I've been talking about how excited I've been that the Olympics is actually starting. And just before it started, uh, I read an article that said why the BBC's Olympic coverage is so limited this year. Now, if you're not someone that's into Olympics or you, yeah, you're not into Olympics, usually what you have to do is you'd watch it on BBC One or the iPlayer and that would just cover the main coverage. But if you pressed your red button or went onto the actual iPlayer itself, you could go and watch any event that was on. You could select what event you wanted to watch. It will tell you the whole schedule. So you could plan your whole Olympic binge out to see what events, what times, and you can watch it. Now, it's limited to BBC One, just BBC One, and they will only show you certain events. And sometimes they don't even show you the whole events. So like on Saturday, I think it was, the gymnastics was on, and they kept flicking between the gymnastics and something else. So you... It was, it was up to you to catch it. I think what they've done, or what it seems to be, is it's limited now. So we're only ever going to be able to watch competitions where there's someone from the UK taking part, I believe. And even then, they can't guarantee you'll see all of them. And if there's two events at one, well, what happened on the weekend, they'll keep flicking backward and forward to try and show you the UK competitors. So if you live in the UK and you're not supporting the UK, I, I don't know what to say to you, but yeah. Um, American giant Discovery have brought the European rights for the games through until 2024. Now, the first thing I heard when I read this was American. Why do the Americans care about the European rights? The Olympics isn't in America. It's in Tokyo. I don't think it's American. Isn't the Olympics all something to do with ancient Greece? Ain't that where the Olympics come from and the Olympians? Nothing to do with America. Why does this American giant feel the need to want to buy the European Right. Listen, if it said Discovery have bought the American rights, whatever. If it said Discovery have bought the North American rights, sorry, Canada, but this is what happens when you attach them. But the fact that you've gone out of your way across to a whole new continent and took all our rights for the games for this Olympics and the next Olympics, it sounds like. I actually haven't, have a, I actually haven't watched one Olympic event because all the ones that I've been interested, I was interested in watching they're never shown on BBC. So at this point, I've just given up attempting to watch the Olympics. It was usually, again, working from home. It's something that you can just put on the TV in the background and watch. And now I'm stuck watching all these events that I don't give two shits about watching. So, but the, that, Olymp I was going to say that's my Olympic rant over. So that was one thing from the Olympics. And this, I don't know if this is the most... Um, I'm trying to think of dramatic. I don't know if dramatic is the word or drama-filled Olympics ever. But there's so much going on. Uh, you've, there's been Olympic athletes that have been told to stop hugging during ceremonies. So I think what happens is if you win a medal, you get your medal. They have the little medal, not the medal, medal ceremony that comes at the end. It's just literally the whole you getting the medal on your neck. They've given everyone, I think it's 30 seconds to take your mask off, go, you go somewhere, you take your mask off for 30 seconds and you can pose with your medal to try and get all your little promo pictures in. Then you've got to put your mask straight back on. Obviously what happens is people are winning, they're hugging their teammates, they're hugging other people in celebrations and the officials are like, ah, 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 no, stop it. Um, the Olympic, the International Olympic Committee has said that they could and will take action against Olympians who defy these safety measures. So you're not permitted to come into close contact unless you're doing judo or any other contact, or any other sport that requires you to get in close contact during the Olympic Games that go on. What else has happened this Olympics? This one, I thought this was a funny story at first until I started reading some of the stories behind it to see whether it's true or not. And in judo, two people actually dropped out instead of fighting uh, some judo person from Israel. So this, this is a, a second judo person has dropped out of the Olympics before facing Israel's Tahar Butbul in the 73 kg division. Olympic officials say Sudan, Sudan's, okay, so the country Sudan, Sudan's Mohamed Abadal Rusul, I think I got that right, didn't show up to face Butbul in their round in their round of 32 bout Monday, despite weighing in for the bout earlier. So they, he turned up to the weigh-in. And just didn't want to turn up to the fight. So when I first read this, I was like, oh, so one person's already dropped out of facing this guy. And then a second person's dropped out wanting to face this guy. I thought this guy must have been the number one judo person. He must have just been kicking ass and taking names, I suppose is what they say. 
But, well, hold on a minute, it comes out. The International Judo Foundation didn't immediately announce a reason why he didn't compete and the governing body didn't respond to requests for comment. Sudanese Olympic officials also didn't immediately comment. Um, so you got the Algeria, so someone from Algeria, so Sudan and Algeria, so someone from Algeria was sent home from the Tokyo Games and suspended by the IGF, which is the International Judo Foundation, I believe, on Saturday after he withdrew to avoid a potential round of 32 matchup with football. He was supposed to face um, the guy. Oh, he was supposed to face this, the other guy that dropped out. Oh, right. So here we go. So you got this guy from Algeria was meant to fight the guy from Sudan. The winner of those two was meant to go up against Butbul, which is the guy from Israel. But the guy from Algeria, he dropped out of the original fight to face the guy from Sudan, which then left the guy from Sudan in there. And then the guy from Sudan was like, well, I ain't fighting him. And he dropped out as well. So they both avoided getting a beat up. The guy from, the, so the second guy to drop out, Ab, uh, Abdarusul, is world 469th rank judoka in his weight class. Um, while the accomplished football, the guy that everyone's dropping out, is seventh. Ooh, okay. Um, Noreen also quit. So, yeah, Noreen, Algeria, the guy that dropped out first. He also quit the World Judo Championships in 2019, right before he was scheduled to fight football. So I'm trying to work out now why everyone's dropping out. I read one thing that said something. Uh, I think I read one that said the second guy said he dropped out because of the whole Israeli-Pakistan thing that's going on. Hold on a minute. I need to try and find out. I want to see if there's any more information on it. Because I don't want to misquote it. Because he basically spoke out and said, I'm I'm sticking up for the Palestine and what's happening over there. Isn't right, so I'm not going to face someone from Israel. Which, when he took that stand, I, I stopped making my jokes about everyone being scared of this guy and not wanting to smoke with him. But I was... It's, it's a real dodgy one that two people... That two people have dropped out of fighting this one guy who also happens to be, who just happens to be from Israel. Right, here we go. Olympic International Committee concerned by forfeits to avoid Israel's judoka, which I think I'm saying judoka, it's judo and then ka, but one word. I feel like that's what you call someone that does judo. Um, it's monitoring reports that two people have forfeited their matches rather than face an Israeli opponent and vowed to take all necessary measures against athletes I'm trying to find out where okay here we go so noreen told an algerian tv station last week that his political support for the palestinian palestine uh, palestinian cause made it impossible for him to compete against an israeli we worked a lot to reach the olympics but the palestine cause is much bigger than all of this he said so yeah there you go one of the guys dropped out so the it's uh, okay. So the IJF, the International Judo Foundation, said his stance was in total opposition of the physiology uh, of the International Judo, Judo Federation, adding that the IJF has a strict non discrimination pro policy promoting solidarity as a key principle reinforced by the values of Judo. So, as always, it seems like politics. I don't know why one, I doesn't, I don't, it doesn't say why one of the other guys has backed out. But one person backed out. Well, one person said he's backed out of that because of what's going on in the Palestine, and he's saying he can't fight an Israeli because of it. Even though he doesn't know that this person Israeli is like pro Palestine or pro Israeli, if that's the correct term to be using. But he's backed out of there anyway. And then more recently, uh, Simone Biles has dropped out of the Olympics as well. So Simone Biles is the American gymnastics, like the. She's the, what is she? She's the most decorated uh, woman US gymnast in history. So, uh, Simone Biles, four-time Olympic gold medalist, multi-time world champion, and arguably the greatest gymnast of all time, withdrew from the team and all-around event at the Tokyo Olympics. It was headlined in the news. The American, who is a sexual assault survivor... Why do they have the, the need to bring these things in? 
Um, she spoke about the importance of preserving her mental health and that they need to protect our mind and our bodies. We are people at the end of the day. Barnes' decision drew praise from many, but there were others who accused her of using mental health as an excuse for a below standard performance. Of course, that's what people want to say. So, yeah, so but when I saw this story, when this story first dropped, I think it popped up, when it first, it first dropped, it said that she was performing... She came off her dismount and it looked like she tweaked her she tweaked her knee or something because then she came off and then was repeared she reappeared with bandaging around her neck her her leg. But now she's saying that she's dropped out because I think she said it's a mental health, she's not having fun doing it. Obviously there's there are struggles and it sparked a debate online in terms of has she let down her team, her country, the Olympics, or is mental health more important? Listen, if she, the, and this is why with mental health, I hate when people start having these debates because it's a simple answer. If your mental health is at stake, you should drop everything. Because worst case scenario, Simone um, Biles, she's going through mental health issues. She's not having fun. She's not feeling it. She doesn't want to be there. But because she doesn't want to let down her teammates and her country, she stays there. Now she's not putting in a full effort. She's feeling crap. She's performing crap. She chases her eyes off the ball and fucks up in gymnastics and seriously injures herself. She could snap her neck. Worst case scenario, she could snap her neck. She could break her arm, break her leg, break her back, break her spine. She could paralyze herself. She could kill herself. It comes out that she, her mental health wasn't there. Everybody would be saying, well, she shouldn't have competed. She shouldn't have competed. She should have dropped out if she wasn't feeling up for it. These are the things that can happen. She should have spoke to a coach. She should have spoke to someone. She should never have been out there in the first place. But no, she didn't do that. What she has done is she stepped out from having... She stepped out and dropped out of it instead of letting this... Or letting her mental health take even more damage by continually to compete. Now people are coming out saying you can't use mental health as an excuse for a bad performance. She's just using this to get to get out. No, it, it doesn't work like that. It, it really You can't accuse someone of using mental health because they had a bad performance. When she's telling you she had mental health, she's got, she wants to protect her mental health. She's not denying the fact whether or not she did or didn't have a bad performance. She could literally come out and say, hey, I had a bad performance because mentally I'm not where I need to be to be able to perform at the best of my ability, which is why I am dropping out. I would rather drop out and protect my mental health than remain in the Olympic Games. Again, it's the, it's the Olympics. She's already got four gold medals. She knows what it is, but it's the Olympics. She's saying I'd rather drop out and protect my mental health than stay here and not only put my mental health at risk, but put my physical health at risk as well. People just... I don't, I'm not going to play the race card. I, I don't know if people would be saying the same thing if it was a white athlete that had dropped out of this. All I'm saying is Simone, well done. Same to um, Naomi Osaka. So Naomi Osaka, the tennis player. Yeah, the tennis player. She dropped out of the, I want to say French Open. She dropped out of an Open. I think it was either late last year or earlier this year and then dropped out of Wimbledon as well. And again, she did that because of her mental health. She was saying, hey, I love the press. I haven't got a bad thing to say about the press. I just don't want to be dealing with it right now. And because I think they were, it's in their contract or if you compete, you have to do the press run. Naomi was like, I'll compete, but I don't want to do the press run. Nothing against the press. It's just my mental health can't deal with all that right now. They were like, no, if you compete, you've got to do the press. So she was like, peace. She said, peace to the Open. She said, peace to Wimbledon. Again, the biggest stage. She was like, peace. See you like next year or see you whenever my mental health gets better. But right now, I'm not doing this. And now Simone Biles, someone else, has done it. And these guys are champions. Like Naomi Osaka is ranked number one or two in the world. Simone Biles, as you just heard me say, undoubtedly one of, if not the best gymnasts, not only in US history, but in history, full stop. These people are well accredited. And they're just saying, no, mental health is more important I'm stepping out of it. And that is one of the best things that people can do. And both of them being, they're both young women of colour, which is important for so many reasons, because there's so many young people out there who, one, don't understand mental health, 
but two would probably tell themselves, oh, it's a phase or mental health isn't real or I'm not going for mental health issues. And they'll push themselves and push themselves until they eventually break. Same for people of colour. I know as a person of colour myself, I know people of colour are very, or have been in the past, very sceptical of things like mental health, therapy, all sorts of things like that. And I think it takes people like this to come out and do that because you know what would happen if someone who was ranked ranked bottom or someone that was that the I'm trying to think of what the word is that the experts would say look this person has got no chance in hell of winning a medal I am surprised they even qualify for the Olympics if that person dropped out and said I'm dropping out from my mental health a lot of people would be like yeah you weren't going to win a medal anyway what does it matter you weren't going to win this anyway what does it matter the fact that someone like Simone, who was on track, I think they said, to win six gold medals this Olympics. Like, she was, she was, she was not guaranteed, obviously, because anything can happen, but she was on track to pick up six, an extra six gold medals in this one Olympics alone. And she's like, look, I'm, my mental health ain't all there. I'm stepping out of this and moving myself away. Listen. Well, well done, Simone. I, I really don't blame you. And everyone that's got an issue with this, suck a dick. How about that? Go suck a dick. Right, moving on. I'm jumping straight into what's on the box because I know a lot of things have happened. But I said to you last week, work is, we've got shit happening at work. It's picking up again. I've got to travel down to just outside of London, down to Guildford again because I'm working away for the rest of the week. This time, I didn't want to leave it till the last second to record the podcast. So I had to record it in a hotel. So I'm recording it now. But... I need to finish this, go make the family food and then hit the road. So I'm jumping straight into what's on the box. I, I, I was going to talk about Rick and Morty, but I, I, came up, I can't call it, I shouldn't call it crap TV because I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I feel like that's what some people would call it. For some strange reason, don't ask me why or how, we ended up on Virgin. So we're, we've got the Virgin box in the living room purely because to get the internet, it was cheaper to get the deal with virgin tv than it was to just get internet i don't know why the must i don't know why we weren't on netflix or amazon prime but for some reason the tv oh the missus keeps watching all these wedding programs i swear she's trying to say something i just don't know don't know what she's trying to tell me by continually watching all of these wedding programs on tv i'm talking don't tell the bride say yes to the dress something about curvy brides all kinds of brides basically it's just on the tv 24 7 so i picked up the remote was flicking through the channels and i saw something on channel i don't know why i was flicking through the channels but i thought hey we're on the tv let's have a look i went on to channel five and there was a program it already started by like 10 20 minutes and it was called call the bailiffs call the bailiffs time to pay up and i was like this is going to be one of those TV shows where it's a camera crew following around a bunch of people. I didn't know whether they were going to be professional bailiffs or if it was going to be like a little side hustle for people. Clicked on it. They looked like official. I don't know what an official bailiff would be, whether they're government appointed or not. But it looked like a full on proper um, bailiff company situation. So I was watching Call the Bailiffs Time to Pay Up. And the, 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 what some people do and go through, it made made me made us feel lucky. We were like, you know what? We get all our bills paid on time. We don't owe no one money. Maybe we shouldn't complain when we can't afford to spend money on the luxuries when all of our necessities are taken care for month in, month out, no delays. So one of the people, I tried to write down as many of them as I could. One of them, we'll start with this one, Someone owed £1,500 in unpaid rent and they couldn't pay it. So they couldn't pay it. Bailiff's turned up was like, yo, you've got unpaid rent from like four months ago. I think they said it was. Uh, the woman was like, I can't pay it. They turned their head to the left and said, this car is, re is registered to this address. If you can't pay it in... And <laughs> At first you think to yourself, this is a bitch. Because they say, if you can't pay it in 15 minutes... We're taking your car. Now, at first thought, when you hear that, how do you expect someone to get 15 grand or 1,500 pounds, 1,500 pounds in 15 minutes? That is a lot to ask for. But then when you remember that they've been ducking the person that they owe this money to for about four or five months, 
it, the bailiffs are there. It's already at the last draw. So the bailiffs are like, if you can't pay this money in 15 minutes for taking the car. She's like, I, I, you can't take the car. She's like, yes, we can. She's like, I can't pay it right now. It's like, ah, well, we'll see what happens. She must have then called her boyfriend. Her boyfriend call, pulls up later on. Her boyfriend arrives and her boyfriend tries to say the car's his. He's like, no, nope, you can't take the car. The car is mine. The bailiffs, again, thinking ahead of like, look, her name is on the insurance. Because her name's on the insurance, it shows that she shares an interest in this vehicle, which is all we need to take it. That was a lesson for me. I was like, oh shit. I thought the vehicle would have to be either registered in her name. Yeah, I thought the vehicle would have to be registered in her name for it to be tied to her. No, nope. because again, she knew they had money. She must have knew the bailiffs were coming because she literally sold the car to her boyfriend the day before these bailiffs turned up on this occasion anyway. Because he was like, look, I brought the car yesterday. I can prove it. And he was like, yeah, but her name's an insurance. That means she is still showing an interest. So then at what point he says, you know what? I'm going to get in the car. You can't take the car if I'm in it. And he was like, we can't, but that's an obstruction of justice and we can call the police and the police can put um, can arrest you on criminal charges for obstructing justice if you get in this car and uh, prevent us from taking it. And I was like, oh, shit. I thought that was a good idea. I thought, you know, let me. Just, I'll just sit on the car. Now what are you going to do? You can't take it I'm sat in it. They were like, nope. We'll just call the police and the police can arrest you and actually put criminal charges on you for this. I was like, shit. In the end, they took the car and then, I don't know, I think they said it was like two weeks later or like when they cooked later on, they took the car and they literally put it on the, put it on the thing, picked the car up, all within four and a half hours. So they say you've got 15 minutes to pay, but obviously as soon as they didn't pay, they stickered the window, called the tow truck, tow truck pulled up, took the car, it then cuts on them like two weeks later, they eventually made the payment but then, to take the piss even more, they had to pay more money than what they would have on the day for extra charges that include things like removal and storage. Like, you've, oh my God, you, because I've never had to own anyone money, you forget these things, like you owe someone money. Depending on who you owe money to, the, you might have to pay interest on the money you owe, so you now you owe even more money. Then they've called the bailiffs. Surely the cost of bailiffs, I don't know who pays for bailiffs. Surely, I'm assuming the creditors pay for the bailiffs to go and collect it off them. But then you've got things like the removal. So they had to, you, I'm taking your car. You have to pay for the removal for making us remove it. You then have to pay the charges for storage. I think they said in, in total, she had to pay an extra £600 in charges. Ay, ay, ay. And then the next, and this was another one. Someone owed over £2,500. I think it was business, their, their business owned, I don't know if it was in rent or something, but their business, someone's business owned £2,500, or he owed £2,500. Hadn't paid the people in six months, so they were after him for his money. They couldn't find this guy for love nor money. However, the business that he was renting obviously has a business address. They turn up at the business address. Who lives there? His ex. This is, this is not what you want to be dealing with. Like, so, there are people out there who probably have stressful times dealing with their ex as it is. Now imagine your ex, no matter what side you're on, but imagine you're at home, you get a knock on the door and it's bailiffs about to tell you we're about to take everything out of this house because your ex owes money and this address is red. She's like, nope, I'm not with him. He doesn't live here. I don't know why this is a business address still and he needs to change it. And they're like, look, unfortunately at the time of this all happening, it's here, it's like, uh, if you have a number for them, you need to contact them and let us know. And she's like, you know what, I'm, I need to find out, blah, 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 blah. And then it turns out that they said, after years of not paying, so after years of this guy ducking and diving his creditors and not paying the debt that he owes, it took a call from his ex to start causing trouble for him to then finally pay up in full. Like, he, in the... <laughs> In the um, show, when he's making the show, the guy rings them. He's like, oh my God, you're making me pay. He's like, I'm going to pay it all in full now. He's like, you guys are leaving with me no money. And they're like, oh, well, you should have paid it. And then he hangs up and he's like, it's, it's amazing what a little trouble, what a little troubling ex can do. This guy has been ducking them for years. His ex called him. He's like, yo, you need to cut this bullshit out right now. Otherwise, I'm going to tell them where you live. And there you go. It's all paid. And then the last one that I saw, which I was just like, I don't know if this was planned. I don't know if she planned to do this or if it was just a fortunate or good events. 
a woman owed over six grand. I can't remember what she owed it for. She owed over six grand. So they turned up to her residence. It turns out that she brought the residence off someone. She used to live there. She's now moved to Canada and sold that whole plot to land developers. So they were like, yeah, this woman owes six grand. She She's moved to Canada. For all we know, she lives, she's in Canada. She's residing in Canada. She doesn't even own the property. So we can't even go in there and start taking stuff or we can't even like take the property and put it up for auction and sell it. It's literally, it's got, she's gone. And they were like, we'll find her eventually. Like she'll have to come back to England. And when she does, we'll be waiting for her. I was like, we're barely, so you're not, it's not that important. So like, she could land in England and move around freely for quite a minute, I reckon, before the Bayless even clock on that she's back in England. But I can see why people watch TV like this, because this made me think I'm never owing anybody money. I don't know how, like, rent, we pay, um, mortgage, no, mortgage is simple. We don't pay the mortgage, they just take the house. That is something we know. I'm talking, these people are owing money to businesses or for rental and things, and then instead of just taking the, like, sending the baby, imagine, do you know how long? you must be avoiding people to send Bayless round to knock the door. And the Bayless, as soon as Bayless turned up, it appeared from all the, all the occasions I saw in this show, whenever a Bayless turns up, it's right, we need the money now, right now, otherwise we're taking stuff. These people just walk in, notepad, just start looking at stuff, ah, oh, TV, it's worth about 200 pound. Oh, this chair's worth about 100, this lamp's worth about six. They literally just start writing it down like that. They just take it all. They hold it for so long and then they sell it. But this woman's car, they literally said to her, if you can't pay the money within, or if you don't get to us within 30 days, it's things like 30 days or 60 days or 90, one of them too. It's like a month to three months, I think. From them taking it, if you can't get the money by then, they will sell your car and use that money to pay off the creditors. And then from there, I was like, well, if my car is a 10 grand car and you take my car and sell it, to pay off this two grand debt I own. What happens with that eight grand? Are you gonna give it back to me? Do you guys keep it? Because now I'm calling Bayless on you because you just stolen 8,000 pounds from me. And just when I thought that was, so that was, what's it called? That was Call the Bailiffs, Time to Pay Up. It's on Channel 5 if anyone ever wants to watch it. It was, it was entertaining. And then we carried on flicking through the channels after that finished and I saw something called Botched about botched um, plastic surgery. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch this because I want to know how people are getting botched plastic surgery. I was like, is it going to be showing me footage from people getting <coughs> plastic surgery done in basements, going abroad to get it done? First one, 23-year-old has spent 75 grand on plastic surgery. So we're going to let that sink in. Again, your money your body, your life, do whatever you want with it. I'm just here making observations. 75,000 pounds on plastic surgery. That included getting his hairline lowered. He was getting grafts. He was getting grafts from the back of his hair or back of his head to put on the front of his head to get his hairline lowered. He was getting fillers. He got pec implants. And he also had bicep implants, which the one of his biceps was fucked up to the point where like I can grab my bicep. He could grab it, flip it, move it around, that shit was, Doc said to him, it's, I could flip it all the way over in a matter of seconds. He was like, if you leave this in a few days to weeks times, you'll find this shit up in your armpits, you'll find it down in your elbow. I was like, imagine your bicep, this is your bicep up in your armpit, your elbow. When it was showing you this guy, this guy wanted to get plastic surgery, I didn't even know you could get, like he was putting like bits of silicon on his forearms, on his biceps, his triceps, his shoulders, his legs. He was literally like an action man, but all plastic surgery. I didn't even know you could get, you can get breast jobs or boob jobs. So I don't know why I didn't think you could get pec implants to give yourself permanent pecs and like quads, thigh, I was, it, hamstring, there was everything. And I'd, again, I watch these programs and I, I, I'm like, oh, okay. And then there was another woman, I'm sure there was only, yeah, there was only two people on this episode. There was another woman who had calf implants, again with the calf, who, whatever, let's go to the gym. There was a woman who had calf implants for 17 years and she now has deformed purple legs. Like they showed you a, a shot of just her feet up to like her knees. It looked like an overweight middle-aged man. And then it shot up and it was some young, relatively attractive woman 
or I wouldn't say young actually, she was about, she looked like she was in her 30, 40s, because she, she had a kid and that kid looked about 18. Well, no, it was American, the kid had braces, so I'd say they were under 16 or 16, but the kid looked old, okay, so she was in her 30s, 30s, 40s, I reckon. And she was saying that every day she has to tape her, tape down her calf implants, and it showed you she had, I'm talking, what's the, is it duct tape? It was duct tape silver, it was whatever silver duct tape is. She was duct taping her calf implants to her legs. So I'm like, you're thinking, hold on, Mom, did she like buy implants and stick? No, these implants are already in her leg, but to give her as much comfort as possible because they were fucked, she was just taping her leg to hold the implants in place. It was weird. And then she was saying that um, she had a subconscious memory. So basically, she went, all her life, for some reason, she felt like there was something wrong with her legs and she needed to get calf implants. And she put it down to she had a subconscious memory that in a past life, she was a German soldier and something blew up next to her legs. That drove her to get plastic surgery and get calf implants in her leg, which then deformed and had been deformed for the past four or five years, she said. And she said she wakes up feeling like her legs are on fire and are going to explode. All because she had a subconscious memory that in a past life she was a German soldier and something blew up next to her. She was very specific. She said something blew up next to her legs, not something blew up her legs, blew up on her legs. Something blew up next to her legs and that meant I need to get calf, imp calf, impl calf implants now. You can't make this stuff up. It's called Botched. It was on E. I'm sure it was on E. The, whatever that channel's called with a pink exclamation mark, that's the channel it was on. Botched, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, if you want to get... I've got friends that have got plastic surgery. I don't... Do fillers, do fillers class as plastic surgery? You've all seen the memes. I'm not going to give my opinions and views on what people look like with fillers. If you believe that that's what you need to look pretty or make yourself feel pretty or whatever... Your life, your body, you do you. I will keep my opinions to myself because that's how I was raised. But that's another episode. Thank you for watching, listening. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. The road to 100 before the end of the year. We still haven't moved up, but you know what? We're... Consistency is key. We'll get there eventually. If you're not on YouTube and you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, Google, any of those DSPs, give me a like, give me a favour, add me to your whatever, share it with a friend. I've been Miles. This has been the Miles High Club Podcast. Peace.